tragedy struck the National Football League on May the 20th of 1939. President Joe Carr suffered a heart attack and died a few hours later. Carr, essentially the only president the league had ever known, as well as a founder of the league in 1920, began his tenure as president in 1921, supplanting Jim Thorpe in the second season of the league. Under his leadership, the National Football League grew into a national game. What is less known about Joe Carr is that he founded the American Basketball League. The ABL was the first attempt to create a professional basketball league. The league operated for 30 years, comprising upwards of 40 teams. He also sparked the rehabilitation of minor league baseball to becoming an integral part of professional baseball. In the 30s, he became president of the National Association of Professional Baseball Leagues, which was at the time the governing body of minor league baseball. At the time of his death, minor league baseball had expanded to 40 leagues with over 4,000 players. Carl Stork, vice president, secretary, and treasurer, was named acting president for 1939. NBC made history in October of 1939 by televising the Eagles-Dodgers game from Ebbets Field. Regularly televised games would not begin until 1951. However, this very first television broadcast set the spring to a future of Monday Night Football, Super Bowl parties, and a lifelong love affair between football fans and their television sets worldwide. This 1939 episode of The Starters features a rematch of the 1938 championship game between the New York Giants and the Green Bay Packers. This time, however, the game would be played in Milwaukee at the Wisconsin State Fair Park. As part of the lease arrangement, the Packers controlled all advertising rights when they played at State Fair Park. Wisconsin Governor Julius Heil, on behalf of the Wisconsin Dairy Industries Association, reached out to Green Bay President Colonel Lee Joannis, requesting permission to call the park the Dairy Bowl for the game. This was a long-awaited opportunity for the Wisconsin dairy industry to finally gain some national recognition. Packer management did not object, and the game was henceforth advertised to be held at the Dairy Bowl. The Packers were heavily favored to win and came in with a high-octane offense while the Giants sported an impregnable defense. Please sit back and enjoy this edition of The Starters. And a lot of sweet romancing When they play the polka
have your attention, please. Introducing the starting players for the New York Giants. At left end, number 23 from Mississippi, Jim Gould. Left tackle, number 36 from Santa Clara, Frank Cope. Left guard, number 2 from Fordham, John Del Isolzo. Center, number 7 from Washington State, Mel Hahn. Right guard, number 42 from Phillips, Orville Tuttle. Right tackle, number 33 from Villanova, John Mellis. Right end, number 21 from Arkansas, Jim Lee Howell. Quarterback, number 22 from Florida, Ed Danowski. Left halfback, number 13 from Des Moines, Kate Richards. Right halfback, number 14 from Marquette, Ward Cuff. And fullback, number 28 from Santa Clara, Nello Falashi. And now, head coach Steve Owen and the rest of the New York Giants. And now, introducing the starting players for your Green Bay Packers. At left end, number 14 from Alabama, Don Hudson. Left tackle, number 44 from Vanderbilt, Baby Ray. Left guard, number 46 from San Francisco, Russ Lefkoe. Center, number 53 from Minnesota, Earl Spencer. Right guard, number 43 from Wisconsin, Charles Goldenberg. Right tackle, number 40 from Alabama, Bill Lee. Right end, number 22 from Wisconsin, Bill Gandy. Quarterback, number 54 from South Carolina, Larry Gray. Left halfback, number 17 from Purdue, Cecil Lisbo. Right halfback, number 24 from Iowa, Joe Lawrence. Fullback, number 30 from Bucknell, Clark Aper. And now, head coach Curly Amber and the rest of the Green Bay Packers. for today's game. The referee, Bill Halloran from Providence. The umpire, Ed Cochran from Chicago. Field judge, Dan T. from Cincinnati. And head linesman, Tom Ford from New York. The captain will now meet with the officials at midfield for today's point talks. has won the toss and picks two receivers.
great defense along with their high octane offense to this contest. They intercepted six giant passes throughout the game. With Don Hudson acting as a decoy, Cecil Isbell tossed the only touchdown of the first half to Milt Gettenbein. Beyond that, the Giants' defense held up to its reputation. However, the second half was all Green Bay as they racked up the yards and points to win the championship by the widest margin in league history, 27 to nothing. Of special note, Governor Julius Heil dedicated the Dairy Bowl at halftime with the breaking of a bottle of milk. His address to the crowd was thus, Los Angeles has the Rose Bowl, Dallas the Cotton Bowl, and New Orleans has the Sugar Bowl. It is therefore fitting that here in Wisconsin, America's dairy world, we also have an athletic field that shall be typical of this great state. In appreciation of the importance of our dairy industry, this field shall from this day on be known as the Dairy Bowl. State Fair Park in Milwaukee remains to this day. However, the Dairy Bowl moniker only lasted until 1943.